I'm so proud of you. Is this the starting part? This is the starting part, yes. We're going to start our pollution. Well, are there anywhere else we can go? Yep, oh. we're going to go lots of places. Well, are, are we, are tubes. Um, aft, you'll see an additional four tubes. Um, these are where our torpedoes are actually fired themselves. 
Um, a few things have changed with the submarine. So originally she was built in four, she was built in forty three, um, commissioned into the Navy forty four, and then was sent directly to the Pacific Theater. Um, there she sunk three point five Japanese freighters. Uh, the point five is an actual thing. Um, so basically, we're giving Crip the this submarine was able to basically damage one freighter or a fourth freighter. Um, in that case, we weren't able to actually sink it. Um, but luckily for the crew, another Baleo class submarine picked it up. Um, so we get an A for effort. Uh, and they get the full credit for the actual kill itself. Was this itself. used in the Eastern? In the Eastern all Pacific. The, uh, Pacific. Pacific. Yeah. Pacific. Pacific, yeah. All Baleo class submarines, um, like Bakuna, were sent over to the Pacific uh -huh. side. Um, so you know why they never? Why did they never send a Gator to the? Um, is it because Germans weren't using merchant convoys? Is that what happened? They were sending them all to the Atlantic, oh, and gotcha. putting them under British crews. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so anything outdated was sent um, to the European theater. Okay. Um, anything new, like this, uh, the uh, Bakuna, yeah. she got sent immediately to the Pacific. Yeah. Um, so after the war, she went through a modernization program known as Guppy, so greater underwater propulsion. So if you guys take a look at this picture. These two submarines are, in fact, uh, Bakuna. Um, so a few things happened. So Guppy has greater underwater propulsion. So they went from, with a few modifications to motors, batteries, and as far as making it more hydrodynamic and reducing uh, drag. Um, so they went from seven knots underwater to 15 knots. So if you notice, her bow has been rounded off. Um, and the structure you guys walked around, the sail, um, that was added on in 1950. So the conning tower itself was removed, deck guns removed, um, basically anything that was going to cause any sort of drag was removed. Uh, four-speed engine, uh, four-speed motors were replaced by two low-speed motors, as well as updates to the battery systems themselves. Um, so you're not a lot of things like the power scopes and stuff have all been put into that sail, so you won't actually be able to see the power scopes um, because they're all up inside of the sail as well. And we'll talk a little bit more when we get back to the command room. Um, any questions so far? I didn't know that this was a Yep, so just push along these edges so it'll be a bit tight in here, so. It's been moved to this time up there. Um, so that's the bridges up there. The main propulsion, or the main controls for the submarine itself are up there, as well as the compass, the firing solution computer. Um, which basically runs trigonometry complex to make a solution so you can get a uh, connecting to your target. Um, so a couple of varying factors you put into that are how fast you're going, how fast they're going, how far away are they, um, and then that connects into a gyro compass which is actually located inside of the torpedo. And sir, sir, if you could just uh, wait for us and we'll, we'll come with you. Hey, um, just let me, do you wanna, just let me know. Um, yep. Um, so as far as down here, um, we have everything is matched up there as well as down here. So if this room were to become inhabitable for whatever reason, we can come down here. The steering wheel for the rudder is right there, that little orange wheel down there. That's our auxiliary. We also have another gyro compass and then another auxiliary compass. So on any Navy vessel, you're going to get auxiliaries and auxiliaries to those auxiliaries just in case. Um, as far as what else is below us, there is a pump room as far as for builds water to remove water that may have come down. Um, so we have crew access going up that as well. So you're going to have a watch up there as well as your officers. 90% of the time this submarine in World War II is going to run on the surface, not underwater. Um, as far as getting underwater, um, I'll draw your attention over here to our Christmas tree and our hydraulic manifold. The Christmas tree has nothing to do with uh, presents or Jesus in any sort of way. It's just as much as red indicates that our we have hatches that are open, green means they are closed. Um, so we need those lights um, that'll, as we're pull, pushing the boat forward, we'll then slowly start to descend. Um, we want to keep that up around five, seven degrees, um, uh, both going down and coming back up. Same as an airplane, 
plane doesn't just jump up to where its altitude is. Same with the submarine. Uh, we're gonna now they did have a chemical, uh, like a, you'll see them, they're like CO2 boxes. They say like CO2, they're all empty now, but basically it absorbs carbon dioxide. What they could do, the record for a below is 32 hours underwater. Um, so basically you can disperse the chemical on like a flat surface, give it as much surface area as possible, and that'll absorb carbon dioxide. Um, again, though, that 32 hours was not an easy 32 hours. Uh, it was a case where Baleo had been attacking a convoy, um, was forced under by a, like a um, depth, basically dropping explosives, um, what we call depth charges. Um, they stayed down for about 32 hours before they decided to resurface the boat, and basically with the one, one of two options is either to run out of oxygen down here and eventually black out, um, or go to the surface and be blown off the face of the earth. They decided for the latter, um, they brought the boat up, um, blew out the tanks, got to the surface, manned all the guns. Um, luckily for them, they were able to slip away. It was dark enough. They were able to slip away from the destroyer. Um, so we know 32 hours is as long as you can go. Because I mean, they were modern stuff, I'm sure they have systems that are generating oh, yeah. the air. I mean, yeah, I mean, stay down as long as you want. How, they, how long can the modern stuff stay underwater without surfacing? I was actually, um, I was actually just talking. We had somebody on earlier, and we were talking about that. Um, I think it would depend. Um, I'm not sure if all those are known. So with the nuclear submarines, they have stuff to scrub the oxygen. It's a different type of chemical defoliant, but basically it absorbs and scrubs the air so carbon dioxide. I think almost. And then some of the other boats, being uh, like Germany and Korea, um, that are diesel electric, they have like oxygen within the fuel itself, so they can run diesels underwater. Um, so World War II, we're running these diesels, um, diesels only on the surface, or when we have the snorkel up. With the Guppy program, they added a 60-foot snorkel, which will allow you to run your engines at 60 feet. Um, and basically, you're just taking in oxygen from a snorkel so that you can run those. Anytime below that, you're going to use your batteries. Any other questions? Yeah. How, how, what's the furthest below you can be before you can do, um, uh, send your periscope up to check and see what's above? Uh, I'm going to say it's going to need to be... Well, that's a good question. So it's going to depend on when we did the modification. I'm not 100% sure. I'll double check what, what periscope depth is. Yeah, I, mean, I want to say like 15, 20 feet during World War II, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'd have to go and look that one up. And then that would have changed with the um, with the guppy modification in the 50s. Guppy? Yeah, greater underwater propulsion. Yeah. Um, but even that, if you can imagine 80 men, take up a lot of end maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so other than the checker and chess boards on this Pacific cruise, um, you also have a movie lockbox up there, so a projector, projector at play. Wow. All of two movies for you on your two month <laughs> tour, um, to watch them sparingly. Projector was... um, but luckily oh, most of the time you're going to be studying yeah. on your offline. So the way food actually comes out.
works is they create power, is fed to these generators up here, same as in the forward engine room. Those that are used to either one, charge the batteries for when we're running underwater, or they power the motors themselves, giving us our propulsion. Um, the propulsion itself is controlled in the maneuvering room, um, which we're gonna go into now. So in the maneuvering room, it is going to get very narrow very quickly. Um, so how we're gonna go is we're gonna go right, and then what I would suggest for the adults, more of a side shuffle, okay? Um, so we're going to go around the what they call an electrical cubicle. It regulates the power for this for the boat.
<laughs> they get 90, he gets 10. <laughs> All right, so, um, so this is our aft torpedo room. So these are Mark 14 torpedoes. These are real, um, minus the 660 yeah, pounds of Torpax explosive. So Torpax is 50 times stronger than <laughs> TNT, so you definitely get a nice boom for your buck for them. Um, unfortunately, they do come with a few foibles. Um, so firstly, up here is where our exploder would be that would actually set off the, um, the warhead that's up here. Um, so these Mark 14s, we'll start with the exploder. So originally they were put together with a Mark 6 exploder. It is a magnetic exploder. It's based on German World War I uh, sea mines. Essentially what happens is um, the tor torpedo is launched. It goes underneath the ship. It doesn't make contact with the ship itself. Um, the magnetic signature around that vessel is disrupts the actual warhead, uh, the exploder itself, setting off the warhead. The benefit there is um, what happens is it explodes underneath the opposing vessel instead of on its side. So the unarmored keel would cause the boat to use, or the opposing ship to split in half when you break the spine. Is there such a thing or du as dud torpedoes? Or do you ever have like, uh, like, like I that? think air uh, like air torpedoes, but I can't remember what they call them. Air slugs. Yeah. Um, they're basically because these cost about 10k in 1943 to fire. What they would do is they would fire them um, and then recover them afterwards. So they.